The major average is closing out a strong week, up more than 1% from Monday's open, with small caps jumping 4% week to date. The Dow setting a record close. Let's get you set up for next week's trade with Jason Trennard. He is the chairman and CEO of Strategus, a Baird company. Jason, welcome. So uh, looking ahead to the Trump years, second uh, wave of Trump years about to start in January, you point out that over the period of time up to now, QE for 12 years was regressive, helping the wealthy at the expense of the poor and middle class. It hasn't been that bad for the market. I think the S&P is up something like no. 4X over that time. Is that going to end? No, that's you know that's the point, John. Uh, it, it's been it's been terrific. If if you have money, uh, it's it's been great, and if you have leverage, it's been even better. But if you're just a regular person, or you know that doesn't have access to the financial markets or doesn't own a big uh, private equity portfolio, it hasn't been so great. If you just have savings, you've got zero on your savings for uh, the better part of 12 years, and I'm convinced that that's part of the reason why President Trump has been so appealing uh, to people because I think there's a lot of people that feel that the, the financial system has been skewed, that these solutions have largely been skewed to benefit wealthier people. Right, but I think uh, a, and a, and a, a, a difficulty uh, here, so though, that we, uh, is, is that, uh, maybe fold this into what you're saying, um, I, I feel like there are a lot of rich people who voted for Trump, uh, eager to, to get tax true. cuts maintained. And then there are a lot of working class people who voted for Trump, frustrated over the very things you're talking about, thinking it's going to get better for me. Can both things happen at the same time? Well, listen, I think, I think having more balance in the economy, particularly from trade policy, uh, but also fiscal policy and some monetary policy, would would be welcome. And, and again, like I'm, I'm a Wall Street guy, so I, I love tax cuts, and I, uh, but I also am an American at, who grew up uh, in, a, in an environment where I, we didn't have any money. And so uh, I, I very much am, am rooting for people that are aspiring uh, to move among the, the social classes. And that, that's something that happens in the United States that doesn't happen a lot of times in other other parts of the industrialized world. Um, I'm very familiar with Italy. I spent a lot of time there. And on for, it's a beautiful place to spend money, it's a very difficult place to make money, very difficult place to move among the social classes. And, and what you want is a system where where people, based on their own merits, can, can move from, from one class to the next and up and down. And, and that happens here more than it happens a lot of other places. I do mm -hmm. think um, our, our trading policy, particularly China joining the WTO, again, another policy extremely good if you own the means of production. But if you're um, just a day laborer or, or somebody that, that, that doesn't necessarily have a college education, it was really tough. And, and, and the changes happened so quickly you didn't have a chance to adjust. And that's what I'm hoping, you know, in, in uh, President Trump's second term, I, I hope you know, it's a little fairer and, and you go back okay. to kind of the basics of what, what this is all about. So we have seen this unleashing of, of the animal spirits uh, in the markets and certainly in some of the consumer confidence readings and even some of the, you know, other data readings we're getting through through um, through the market as well. How to think about how should investors be thinking about how this trade policy, how tariffs actually coalesce, especially if that happens alongside tax cuts. There's also the immigration piece of this. And of course, having this broader conversation as you have a Fed that is on pace to cut or maybe slow down the rate of cuts. Yeah, I mean, I'll just give uh, um, I'll just give you my own views for whatever they're worth. I, I if I were the Fed, I would slow down uh, the rate cuts, partly because you do have a, a new administration coming in and you're not quite sure what that's going to look like. Um, I also think that, you know, in some ways I'm a little bit more worried uh, in terms of the impact on the economy. I'm a little bit more worried about immigration than I am about tariffs, uh, particularly as it relates to inflation. Because I do think if the, the studies have shown, if you look at the Peterson Institute, if you have mass uh, deportation, which, which a lot of people support and could be, could be good for socially for, the, for, the, uh, for society, um, but it, it also ha could have a very big impact on inflation, uh, a bigger, much bigger impact uh, than, than tariffs. Tariffs don't necessarily have to be inflationary, uh, depending on whether we produce some of the goods we're, we're, tar we're putting tariffs on. So it could be just a shift in, in relative prices. So I'm, I actually am not too worried about that. And I'm, I've, I've met President Trump a couple of times. We're hardly intimates. 
but I very much understand where he's coming from in terms of tariffs because um, the U.S. consumer is the biggest, it's really the biggest prize in the world economically and it makes no sense in my opinion or in, in his opinion to give mm -hmm. that away for free. There's, you know, there are reasons why we should negotiate, we should negotiate hard uh, on making sure the access to those markets is something that, that gives the U.S. some sort of benefit in, in my opinion. I don't think that's unreasonable. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's actually how every other country would deal with it. And I think that's, uh, that's the position from which he's coming.